Yo, 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 everybody. Here's part three of 1.1. 1 .1. So today, so if you have not watched part two, you have to watch that one before we get into part three. Now, what we're gonna do is today we're gonna estimate square roots and cube roots, especially ones that are not perfect. Okay, that are not perfect squares or perfect, cu or perfect cubes. And that's when we're gonna get into what an irrational number is. And we're also gonna get into imperfect squares and how to estimate those. So irrational numbers are numbers that are not rational, but irrational numbers are basically numbers once they become a decimal, they go on forever and they do not repeat and they do not terminate. Pi is an example of an irrational number. It is a number that goes on forever, it does not repeat, and it does not come to an end. Other examples of irrational numbers would be imperfect squares. If I asked you for the square root of five, we don't know what that is. And if you were to plug it into a calculator, it would give you a crazy decimal. It's gonna be two point something, and then it's gonna go on and on and on, and it just keeps going. It never repeats and it will never end. That is an irrational number. Okay, so an irrational number is when the decimal will go on forever without repeating, will not terminate. It's a number that's not rational. So imperfect squares, imperfect cubes are example of irrational numbers. Now, we're gonna look at how to actually estimate an imperfect square and an imperfect cube, especially without using a calculator. We are not allowed to use calculators at all. Okay, so those are not an option. You have to be able to show me how to do it without one. And then um, that's that. So four. Imperfect squares. So here I have the square root of 11. Whoops. Hold on, guys. Okay, sorry. So anyways. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our perfect squares to estimate a square root that is not a perfect square. So what I mean by that is square root of 11. I am going to look at what two values are the square root of 11 in that are perfect squares. So are in between, I mean. Where is 11 is in between which two perfect squares? And if you have your notes from yesterday with the list of all your perfect squares, it should be really easy to find. Because it's gonna be in between nine and 16. Those are two perfect squares, because nine, square root of nine is three, the square root of 16 is four. So, I know that the square root of 11 has to be a decimal in between three and four. Now, what I can do in order to get become really accurate, I look to see how far away it is from the first one, how far away it is from the left. And what I mean by how far away, how far away is 11 from nine? From this perfect square, how far away are we? We are two spots away. So what I can do is, because it's really close, I'm not gonna say it's 3.2, but what I, what I know is, is that it's two spots away from nine. So 11 is two, two away from nine but the total distance between these two perfect squares is seven. So I know that three and two sevenths would be a really good estimate for where this perfect square is. Three and two sevenths. Now the problem is, is we wanna have our answer in decimal form, which means I need to figure out what two sevenths is as a decimal. And we are doing an estimation. So there's a couple ways we can look at this. One, I can actually do just two divided by seven. Well, seven goes into two, zero times, bring my decimal, add a zero. Seven goes into 20 twice. So if seven goes into 20 twice, hold on real quick, guys. So seven goes into 22 times, subtract 14. I'm left with six. I can bring down a zero. Seven goes into 68 times. I'm gonna stop there. Here's why. I'm trying to check to the nearest 10th. I don't need to keep going. There's no reason to. I just did quick division to kind of get an idea of where we're at to the nearest 10th. 3.28, these are my hundredths values. This makes me change. This makes me, this eight makes me round this two up to a three. So 3.3 .3 is my final answer. So 3.3 .3 is my estimation. If you had put 3.2, I think that's a great estimation as well. Okay, the reason why is your first value was tenths was two. If you can't stop there, 
a little bit less accurate. However, it's still a really good estimation. You're only one tenth off. The way you would check your work is you would multiply your answer by itself. So if I had 3.3, I can multiply 3.3 by itself and check my work. And we get a lot of nines here. And see if I got something that's close to 11. Because I'm estimating what the square root of 11 is. Well, the square root of 11 should be pretty close. Like it's, whatever I get, should, when I multiply by itself, it should be really close to 11. Now, it's not going to be exact. However, it should be really close. I got 10.89. 10.89 is really close to 11. So that's a good estimation. And we're done. So I know that was kind of a lot, but let's do a quick little recap here. Quick little recap. First, figure out the two perfect squares that's in between. That's always first. Then we figure out, well, how far away is it from the front number, from the one on the left-hand side? Okay, because I know because it's in between 3 and 4, it's got to be 3 point something. So I want to figure out how far away is 11 from 9, because 9 is, the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm figuring out how far away are these two numbers, and then I can just divide it by the total distance. And that's going to give me a really good estimation. Square root of 42. We'll do this one together, and then you guys will try 80 on your own. So pick out the two perfect squares. So it's in between 6, because that's square root of 36, and it's in between the square root of 49. Those are our two perfect squares that it's in between, which means it has to be 6 point something. I know that because it's in between 6 and 7. All the values in between 6 and 7 are 6 point something. So I want to figure out, well, the first number that's below it, I want to figure out how far away is it from 36. Well, it's 6 away from 36. It's 7 away from 49, which means it's going to be, look at how, this is really close to being right in the middle. But it's a little closer to 36. So my first estimation is just going to be 6.4 without even doing any division. Because... 6.4 means it's a little bit closer to 6 because it's not quite exactly in the middle because I'm a little closer to 6. So 6.5 would be in the middle, and I went one-tenth further to the left or further closer to 6 because that's where I'm at. So 6.4 is a great estimation. I can actually check that right now and just see, how, well, how did I do? Did I do good at 6.4? And I can do my multiplication over here. Okay, I'm just going to plug it into a calculator right now just to save us some time. And I got 40.96. That's pretty good. It's pretty close to 42. Now, I probably, 6.5 maybe was a little bit closer. Um, I think 6.5 probably went a little bit over. But 6.5 would have also been a great estimation as well. And if I had done my division, the more accurate way to do it, I showed you guys kind of a one short way to do it, but a more accurate way to do it, would be, well, it was 6 away. The total distance from here to here is 13. So I should have done 6 and 6 thirteenths and done 6 divided by 13. Okay, that would have given me the more accurate way. And then that might have changed a little bit of my answer. All right. Moving forward. I want you guys to try this one on your own. So try this one. See how you do. Pause it. The square root of 80 should have been actually pretty simple. And the reason why is it's in between square root of 81, which is 9, and 64, which is 8. Well, isn't 80 really, really, really close to square root of 81? It's only 1 away over here. We're 16 away, we're 1 away. So what that means is we know it has to be 8 point something because it's in between these two numbers. So this is all 8 point something, 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 all the way up until I get to 9. And it's just before 9. So the closest number I can get to the nearest 10th that's close to 9, that's in between 8 and 9, is just 8.9. So that would have been the best and closest and most accurate estimation. Okay. Cube roots. Cube roots are very, 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 very similar. So again, cube roots are tricky they're not tricky if you have your list of perfect cubes in front of you so what we want to do is we always want to figure out well which two perfect cubes is it, is it in between so square root of nine I mean the cube root of nine is in between the cube root of eight 
in the cube root of 27, which is in between 2 and 3. So I know my answer is 2 point something. 9's really, really, really close to 8. It's only 1 away. Okay. It's pretty far away here from 27. It's 18 away. So, 2.1. This 2.1 is really close to 2 because my answer has got to be really close to 2, but not quite at 2. So 2.1 would be as close as I can get. And then I could always check my work by doing 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.1. If I were to multiply, that was a 2. Multiply 2.1 times 2.1, get my answer, multiply again by 2.1. That would tell me how close I got. I think you guys at this point can try these two on your own because it's the same process as a cube. The cube root's the same process as the square root, so get a list of your perfect cubes. And then make your estimation, and then we'll check. So pause it, try it. Okay, so here are the answers that I got for you based on my estimations. So for the second one, you could add 4.2 or 4.3. I figured out that 77 is in between 4 and 5, so it's got to be 4 point something because it's in between the cube root of 64 and cube root of 125. Looking at how which one it's closer to, it's 13 away from 64. It is 48 away from 125, so it's a lot closer to 64, so it's got to be less than 4.5. And, um, and then I could have also put it as 13 over 61 because there's a total of 61 in between these two numbers. So I would have gotten, probably if I did my division or my estimation, I'm thinking between 4.2 and 4.3 is a very, very, very reasonable est estimation. You can always check, and an check your answers by multiplying that by itself three different times. Same thing over here. I got 6.2 or 6.3. I think if you estimate with one of these answers, it would have been great. 250 is in between 216 and 343, which is really in between 6 and 7. So it's got to be 6 point something. Well, 250 is a lot closer to 216 than it is to 343, and I can tell by these numbers right here. It's a lot closer to 6, which means it's got to be less than 6.5. So 6.2 or 6.3 are really reasonable estimations. Now, if you put 6.5, just saying it's in the middle, that means you're not really putting much thought into it. You know it's in between 6 and 7. However, you're just saying it's right in the middle, which it's not. Okay, It is not. It is definitely, obviously, closer to 6, So, which is why we need to have a decimal that's closer to 6 than to 7. Okay, guys. That is it, okay? So estimating, it does take some practice. You need to show, this is the work I expect to see. Like we need to show our steps here, okay? And um, it's something that takes practice, it takes time. So just make sure you're not uh, skipping the practice. Make sure you're not, make sure that you are putting in forth the effort in all these problems. Because when you start practicing, practicing it, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, okay? Things to remember. Use list of perfect. What use list of your perfect squares. And cubes. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Get your independent practice done. Gradius out.